So, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that people have been having a little trouble with is the idea of embedding. And now let me tell you a little bit more about embedding. You see, one of the new Web 2 technologies, well, it's been around for about six or seven years, is the ability to take content from one area and to move it into another. This is revolutionary for what we do. So we can take information or images or media created in one location and we can move them to where our students are. It's a wonderful thing that we can do now. So let me tell you a little bit more about how we're going to do this in this situation. So I want to take a Google document that I've created and I want to place the contents of that in my blog. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't I just copy the text and then move it into the new location? Well, in fact, you could do that. But what if that Google document changes or what if the imagery that you're using in that document uh, you want to tweak a little bit or, or change? Well, you'll have to go to the source, copy the, uh, the information again, and place it back in the new location unless you embed it. And then it creates a window from the one location to the other. So anytime you change information on the original document, whether that be a media, whether that be just a, uh, a simple Google Doc or Google Spreadsheet, it changes in all of the other locations where it's embedded. So let me show you how we're going to do that. I'm going to take my file right here, which is Reflow. This is a, a simple Google Doc. It's got some information here for reflowing text. Don't even worry about that. And I'm going to go up to my Share options. By clicking Share here, it's going to bring up this uh, window. I can choose who I want to share it with. Um, I can add people. In fact, what I want to do is I want to actually pull down the the, uh, the settings here and choose publish to the web. Okay, This means I'm allowing other people to see it, which is a necessary step in embedding. Now, pulling up this publish to the web option gives me this wonderful embed code down here at the bottom. I'm going to select it and copy it and then return to my blog site where I'm creating a new blog. Now, for those of you who have forgotten how to do that, um, you simply, on your uh, blog settings here, choose New Post. I'm going to create a new post, and we're going to call this Google Doc, um, or whatever you decide to call it. Now, you'll notice over here two tabs, one for Compose, one for Edit HTML. Now, since embed code exists in HTML, we're going to paste the HTML code in this location. Now I've copied it, simply going to hit paste. I could do this with keyboard shortcuts as well. And it gives me this little frame source. And while you may not understand code, Blogger does. And that's all that we need. So we're going to paste this code in the HTML mode, and we're going to uh, preview this post. You'll notice anytime you flip back and forth between the Edit and Compose tabs, you get a different set of instructions. Now, here in the Compose tab, you'll start to see our document popping up here. Here in our Compose tab, we can choose our font and our font size and bold and italicized, all those details that we're used to seeing in a WYSIWYG editor. WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. And that's what the initials stand for, WYSIWYG. But in the edit HTML mode, we just see the raw HTML that the computer is using, or rather Google is using, or Blogger in this case, to create a web page that all browsers can see. So I'm going to simply hit Publish Post. We can see what it looks like in my blog. Now if I go back to my original document and change some information, it will change it in this document. I've created a window from this document, from this page, back to the original document. I hope that this is helpful and that it allows you to be able to embed different objects in your blogger page.